Hello and welcome to the Gritty Clueless. I'm the Monk and today we are in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. This video is all about the kingdom. It's a quick video of talking about how you can go about getting your first kingdom, the requirements you need to uh, fulfill and where you should start looking. Now I know that a lot of people haven't actually played this game before. It has been on PC for a very long time and it's jumped over the console in the last couple of weeks. And of course, that's why I started a beginner's guide series, you know, talking exactly about the console, what you got to do and how you got to do it in 2022. Now, the first thing that you need to do in order to get a kingdom is to finally get your your clan to tier rank four. Now, that is not easy. The game does actually do a really good job of helping you understand where you need to do and how you need to do it um, in like the main mission of the of the normal campaign. So if you're not in sandbox, you should have like a campaign mission. If you follow that, it does a really good job. You need to assemble the, the dragon banner. Once you do, it will kind of like, you know, walk you step by step how to create your own kingdom. Getting to clan, uh, clan tier rank four, however, is not easy. Um, you need something like 900 renown in order to get that. That is so hard. 900 renown in order to get to clan tier four is a huge ask when you're very first starting off the game. Now, I recommended when you very first start to do tournaments. Tournaments is a great place to earn some money, to earn some gear, and to start getting your renown. However, you would need to win something like 300 tournaments in order to have enough renown to start your own kingdom. So this is not going to be the way for you. Well, at least it's not going to be the only way. It's certainly a great way to start. There are lots of different things you can do. And the way that I personally recommend the best is war. Going to war, attacking looters, villages, that kind of thing. Any kind of battles. Because um, you can earn renown very, very quickly that way. Another way you can do it is as you progress your, um, your clan tier, you will unlock parties. And the more parties that you actually unlock and, and grab... The more people you have under your clan actually getting um, experience for you or getting more renown for you, um, which is really good. I think in uh, clan tier rank three, you can actually have three guys running around, you and two other guys, um, which is really great because it means that they can earn renown under your name, earning you points. Also, certain perks that you pick within the tech tree um, can give you renown for owning workshops, for owning um, for owning caravans, or for being the tournament champion. If you're the tournament champion, you get one renown per day every day. All these little things massively help you achieve your goal of hitting uh, clan tier rank three. Now, I went to war with a kingdom. I basically found a kingdom that I didn't like, thought I could pick on them, started a war on my jack, me and my hundred troops versus the entire kingdom and we've done fantastic it was a great way to earn renown because in those larger battles you can get you know 10 20 30 40 or more renown per hit which is so much faster than doing it any other way it's quite funny because I was literally just joking within my Discord about how many of this kingdom's kings that I have killed because I went around executing every single one of them. But after you finally hit Clan Tier 4, your next job is to find a target. Now, there's a couple of things you can do. You can find a city that has revolted, rebelled, and attack those. And these really are the easiest way or one of the easiest ways to start your kingdom. Because if you attack one of these rebelled cities, uh, then you're not actually going to war with any kingdom currently. You are literally attacking an unaffiliated um, town. There will be around 400 troops in there, depending on what's happened recently or not. You could get lucky. There could be less. But these are the type of places that you want to attack. I personally found a castle with only 200 troops defending it. And there was nobody stationed here. So these were the 200 quite 
easy troops for me to kill. I knew that me and my men could have them. I think I was rocking about 100 troops at the time, but they were, you know, high tier level troops. And as I was already at war with the people that own a castle, I thought it was the perfect opportunity to grab it and potentially start my kingdom. Of course, grabbing your first castle you know or first town isn't easy you really do have to defend your troops to actually get in because you do end up having these choke points especially if you have to use ladders and not siege um, weapons to you know to get it so defend your troops allow them to actually get up on that ladder and then i would recommend seeking any archers in a nearby vicinity making sure you clear out those archer nests you know go in the towers maybe or Sometimes you have like rows of archers kind of near those ladders and they're just raining down fire, but you want to keep your troops alive. So take care of those archers as quickly as possible would be my recommendation. And if you have a decent amount of high tier troops, you really shouldn't have a problem. I would recommend heavy cavalry and some decent archers. Archers typically will stay on the outside shooting at the walls and then you've got your heavy cavalry coming in. Okay, so you're the right clan tier, and you now have something under your name, a castle or a town. Have you got a kingdom? No. As you can see, that button is still grayed out for me. However, after you then install a governor, um, you need a governor, then go talk to your governor, find them, talk to them, and from that screen then, you can declare your interest in creating your own kingdom. There'll be a couple of questions. You can have a, a, you know, a bit of a chit chat. And from there, boom, you are done. You have created your own kingdom. And with that comes many responsibilities. Of course, you are also a target for everyone in the game. If you only have one town, one castle, you are probably the smallest kingdom in the game and everyone's going to see you as a easy target. Don't be afraid to pay for peace. It does cost 100 influence to sue for peace. Um, and you will have to pay, you know, kind of like a, a fee to, for this piece as well. But it is going to be worth it long term for you. Because keeping that castle and keeping your kingdom alive is oh so important. But as you can see, we've done all those steps. We have our, our kingdom page finally. And of course, now we can finally start putting together armies and recruiting other clans into our kingdom as well. That, however, is probably for a, another video. Let me know down in the comments below if you would like to see a video on recruiting other clans in or the best policies to take maybe. Let me know your questions. I'll do my very best to answer in the comments. You can drop into the Discord. The link for that will be down in the description and we can have a chat there. But as ever, more videos are on the way. So drop your video suggestions down below as well. And lastly, if you've enjoyed this video, learned something or just found it entertaining, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. Helps this channel grow so much and it's really appreciated, honestly. All your support recently has been absolutely amazing. Love seeing the channel grow and look forward to seeing it continue. But until next time, guys, I've been a monk, we've been a Chrissy Kudis, and I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming.